Hi there, live video. Welcome to another edition of Amiga Retro Games. I'm sorry that it's been so long since this particular part of Episode 5 has been released. I've been involved with various other projects and a few things throughout the internet as well as on my video, so I do apologise for the tardiness of this. Um, anyway, today, Episode 5 Part B, and we are going to be covering the second game in the Pinball Trilogy for the Amiga called Pinball Fantasies. Now, like Pinball Dreams, yeah, it was an Amiga game based, uh, designed by Digital Illusions back in late 19 1992, and was the prequel to Pinball Illusions, which is the final, you know, the final stage of the trilogy. Now, basically, like um, like Pinball Dreams, Pinball Fantasies contains uh, four themed um, pinball tables of varying difficulty and level. Uh, the first table being Party Land. Uh, it's a table oriented around an amusement park where uh, the letters of either party or, cra uh, or crazy must be lit uh, in order to begin a high scoring event. It's the easiest table um, due to several high scoring targets such as the arcade and the loop wrap. Yeah, very useful, very good if you're a novice. <coughs> Excuse me. The second table in the uh, game is Speed Devils. Which is focused around for car racing, you know, like uh, Daytona or Formula One or stuff like that. You know? uh, and the player must overtake cars in this particular table to take the lead. This is a little bit more difficult because uh, because it has fewer high fewer high scoring features than the party line table. The third table in the series, which I, I kind of liked, but I'm not very good at, uh, is the Billion Dollar Game Show. As its name implies, it's a set around. The, it's a game show style where you know four, where the four players must stand there, win prizes, etc., etc., etc. And this is done by utilizing the ramps and the hits, you know, and the towels and stuff like that. Surprisingly enough, this is the most difficult. Even though it's the third, you would have thought that they would have descended in order of difficulty. Actually, this is the most difficult because um, if the player loses the ball before winning the jackpot. All the prizes disappear off the table, and you've got to go around hitting all the, you know, all the bumpers and stuff and the ramps again just to get the thing lit back up. Now, the last one is Stones and Bones. That is based on a haunted house where the player must go through different modes of play by hitting the targets to play out, uh, spell out the word stone and bones, uh, with the later modes scoring more points. This table is very similar in the theme to the Nightmare table featured in Pinball Dreams. It's I didn't quite like this particular table, but it it was okay for the most part. Anyway, onto some of the features. Ramps within this game. Each table has one ramp. Speed Devils has two, uh, which has a value that increases every time the ramp is hit. The first time you hit through, it, an extra hit is awarded for each ramp. For each ramp hit, an extra 100,000 is added to the bonus. Different tables also have different uh, names for the ramps, like in Partyland they've got like Cyclones, in Speed Devils it's Miles, uh, in the Billion Dollar Game Show it's Skittles, and in Stones and Bones it's Screams. That's the different features you get. Most of the bo bo special bonuses though, um, such as starting a high score round, or lighting up an extra ball, or multi-ball, or something like that, uh, are like... Uh, you know, I'll give you an example. Pyland has no special bonuses at all because it's the easiest table. Uh, Speed Devils starts off uh, starts off road at 10, lights an extra ball at 20, and alternates between <coughs> lighting and light, uh, lightning and jump and the jump off starting off road every further 10 turns of the thing you go. Billion Dollar Game Show starts with Money Mania at 6, um, alternating between the two kinds of Money Mania because uh, there is two different plays of it. The exception is that uh, that at 12, when the, uh, the sorry, I'll start that again. The exception is when you actually get 12 bonuses, and then it, instead of it actually starting with something like Money Mania and stuff, you get an extra ball. Stones and Bones lights an extra ball at the tower at 10 bonuses, and lights 5 million for each further 10. Very useful. High scoring rounds within the game. By the way, this is as a spoiler plot, so if you actually are intention of um, playing the actual game through uh, emulator or something, skip this bit. <coughs> A 
Anyhow. Party land. Happy hour. Started by light lighting up all the word party. All the targets worth a million. Jackpot is list. Lasts for 30 seconds. Mega laugh. Which is funny. Especially with the sound effect. Started by lighting crazy. And then all ramps and sinkholes are worth 5 million. As when the jackpot is lit. It also lasts for 30 seconds. Speed Devils. Table has off road. Started by earning 10 miles. Or a later amount. All targets are worth 100,000. Lasts for only 30 seconds again. Turbo mode. Started by placing uh, first and scoring goal. All ramps worth 5 million. Jackpot is lit. Super jackpot is lit after 20 seconds. If the jackpot is collected, the jackpot lit on first place before obtaining the goal. Again, only lasts 30 seconds. God, that was long with it. Sentence. Billion dollar game show has money mania. Started by getting 6 skills. Except for 12, like I mentioned before, when you get an extra ball. Either all, either all the targets are worth 500,000 and all the ramps and sinkholes are worth 1 million. Lasts again only 30 seconds. Stones and Bones has the Tower Hunts, the Ghost Hunts, and the Grim Reaper. All very similar stuff as well. You know, you get like, like 5 million, 10 million stuff, and sequ subsequently like, lasts for 30 seconds. Start Same with Ghost Hunts. You get the fifth mode within that, all the bonus ramps and stuff like that, and you get a million. It's as simple as that. I'm not going to keep going on about all the high scoring round stuff because I could be here all bloody day. Anyhow, back to actually the game itself. The community in the gaming world. Both the pinball dreams and fantasies are both considered, like I was mentioned in the first part of this thing, cult games. Uh, pinball fantasies was one of the more was more technically advanced than its predecessor, offering many new features that the original didn't. For example, each of the pinball tables were now three screens high rather than the original two when it scrolled. Now three screens high. Um, the tables also include three flippers, except stones and bones. With them, um, except stones and bones, we still have the just, just the traditional two flippers, and all for all of the tables in Pinball Fantasies boasted more advanced animations. Uh, stones and balls table even offered a fake multi ball too. Uh, it could lock the ball in certain it could lock the ball in certain situations, and the player could launch another ball to play with. Very useful. As for the versions that were released of Pinball Fantasies, the original distributed version for the Amiga came on three floppy disks, and it would run on computers only with one megabyte of RAM. So if you only had the old 512k Amiga, basically you were you were screwed. Yeah. Special version with a fourth floppy allowed it to run on on those five on those 512k uh, Amigas, but it was incredibly rare to come across. Uh, uh, the Amiga CD32. Uh, had a version which was released in 1993. An improved AGA version for the Amiga 1200 and 4000 uh, was later released, again on four floppies, like the special 512k version. It was later ported to the PC286 PCs, uh, running DOS. Compared to the substandard port of the previous game in the series pin uh, for the PC, Pinball Fantasies uh, was quite outstanding in quality for, for being run on a 286. The PC version is also notable, notable um, for offering high quality music and sound, uh, although although a bit quiet, um, but it did boast some more advanced uh, improvements of the Amiga version. Uh, it was also previously it was also one of the first ones that was previously done without actually using a separate sound card. That was, was one of the things that made the PC version of that game put, uh, very well very well received. The thing would re the thing would even run on a 12 megahertz 286, and only required a VGA card. Uh, it was because that you'd mo used something called Mode X and split the screen scrolling to avoid having to redraw the screen every frame. So they did they did do a nice port for the PC one rather than when they did Pinball Dreams and did a diabolically diabolically poor job of it. Amongst other ports done for consoles, there was the Atari Jaguar. Uh, it had extra colours, but with slower ball movement, unfortunately. The Super NES version of the uh, game was also released, which contained all four tables and had, had and the same music as in the Amiga version. Unfortunately, it suffered from limited co uh, a limited color palette, which kind of degraded the quality of the animations and, and gameplay. A Game Boy version was also released, um, and it also had to again have some features uh, limited due to the little game, you know, the Game Boy's little power at the time. 
A comparison table um, was also released for um, from Pinball Mania. As Pinball Fan, as Pinball Fantasy still up for DOS. Yeah, I don't know what that one is. I'll have to research that one myself. A Game Boy Advance version of the game has been out under the name Pinball Challenge Deluxe, which has all the f all the tables from Pinball Fantasies and Pinball Dreams. Our version is available. Ah, here's some news for you. A version of the game for all you Xbox players out there is available in the future over Xbox Live's arcade on the 360. That might be worth checking out. Anyway, I'm going to shut up in a few minutes. Uh, in fact, I'm going to shut up now and actually let you see some of the gameplay footage. But, yeah. Pinball Fantasies, people. And I'll see you in Part C. With luck. <laughs> Bye. Oh, my God.